For the most part, people play D&D to get invested in long-term campaigns. That's generally where you find the best character development, the most satisfying rewards, and the most emotionally resonant conflicts. But sometimes, you don't really want that commitment, and you just want to play a one-shot. Maybe you're at a convention or some other environment where you won't be able to just continue the session next week. Or maybe you're in between campaigns with your main group. Or maybe your players just want to take a break from epic adventure with a less serious session and a fresh set of characters where they don't need to worry about continuity. In my opinion, since they can rarely achieve much in terms of depth, the most important quality to a good one-shot is novelty. Under most circumstances, you really shouldn't take one-shots very seriously, and you should give your players the freedom to try out wacky character concepts that might overstay their welcome in a longer campaign. Likewise, as a dungeon master, one-shots are the perfect time to test out crazy ideas that can really turn the tables on how the game is played. All of this goes with one exception, though. If your players are brand new to the game, then it's probably best to give your one-shot a much more conventional structure with a classic fantasy atmosphere, so they can really get an accurate feel for what the game is about. But if your players are at least slightly experienced, I think it's best to spice up your one-shot with some sort of major twist, and here are seven ideas for doing just that. My first idea, which is something that you might have already considered, is the PvP one-shot, or player versus player if you're unfamiliar with the term. D&D is nearly always a cooperative game, and for good reason. Players who think that the game is all about them, to the point of harming other characters who slight them, are usually annoying. But if you abandon that pretense, and have one session where there's no higher goal than to just beat the crap out of each other, then that can be fun as hell. Without a doubt, this session will mostly be combat focused, but that doesn't mean that it can't include any elements of storytelling. The premise doesn't have to be as basic as, you're in an arena, now fight to the death. Maybe the characters meet each other at the center of a labyrinth, where there's a flower that grants immortality, but it can only give it to one person, so they need to fight over it. Even if it is just a gladiator arena, you should probably explain why the PCs have been called to fight there, so they can develop backstories accordingly, which can maybe cause things like alliances and emotional decisions. The one potential problem with PvP is that some players are much better at character optimization than others. If this can sometimes cause issues in standard gameplay, just in terms of one player stealing the spotlight from the others, then these problems are especially magnified when the players are fighting each other. If you're pretty sure that one of your players knows the system much better than everyone else, then maybe you should make the PvP one-shot relatively low level so there isn't much room for fine-tuning, or maybe encourage that player to play a less powerful class, like Monk or Ranger, or maybe give the less skilled players a free item or ability score increase. This will probably lead to more unpredictable, and therefore more fun, gameplay. My second one-shot idea is the Pass to the Left one-shot. The premise of this one is simple. Everyone brings a full character sheet, complete with personality and backstory, and once they sit down at the table, you tell everyone, take your sheet and pass it to the left. Then, you play a session, which can be relatively normal or totally crazy, in which everyone is playing a character that someone else designed. This is obviously something that you do not want to communicate to your players in advance, it should be a total surprise. If you think that this is pushing your player's envelope too far, then you could allow them to make a couple of small changes to their new sheet, whether you limit it to non-mechanical features like gender or alignment, or maybe let them replace a spell or feat here and there. But if your players are experienced, I think there's a lot of fun to be had in playing a character designed completely by the person to your right. Or maybe the person whose name is below you in the Discord call. You get the idea. Next up, we have the Deck of Many Things one-shot. Look at this item. It's toxic. Disgusting. If you're unfamiliar with it, it basically involves a player drawing a card from it and being subjected to a random effect. Which can be as innocuous as gaining a permanent plus two to an ability score, or as obnoxious as immediately shifting your character's alignment to the exact opposite of what it currently is. Or making it so that your character can rewrite any event in history. Or forcing your character to face the Grim Reaper in single combat. If you throw this into a normal campaign, a single card will probably ruin the game more than a Black Lotus. But you probably heard me say that, and got at least a little bit curious as to how the campaign will be ruined. I obviously felt the need to use this item at some point. What did you think I was going to do? Let these two and a half pages in the Dungeon Master's Guide go to waste? Along with my physical copy of the deck that my friend thought it was a good idea to gift me? 
The obvious solution is to go wild with this deck. Use the full 22 card version, but keep it in a game world where nothing is going to be ruined for more than a few hours. Trust me, no matter what kind of environment you throw this deck into, the game will become very absurd very quickly. But in the context of a one-shot, it can be absurdly fun. Next up is the hardcore one-shot. In most D&D games, the fights are going to be skewed at least slightly in favor of the heroes most of the time. Why? Because one of the most satisfying parts of role-playing games is a sense of progress and continuity. While the occasional character death can really move the story forward, if your characters are just dying over and over, it's hard to tell a satisfying story. But if you don't plan to continue the adventure, you can just throw that rule out the window. Pit your third level heroes against a Mind Flayer and a trio of Gricks, not to mention the falling stalactites coated in Wyvern's Venom. And that's only the first layer of the dungeon. Unlike some of my other one-shot ideas, this is a concept that you probably should communicate with your players in advance. First of all, the session will probably be very focused on combat with a side of exploration, so if some of your players are more into the social side, then they might want to skip. Also, if characters are expected to die at a moment's notice, then players should be encouraged to bring several character sheets. This session will probably be very fast-paced, so waiting for players to make new characters in between every fight could really bog the game down. Another idea is the defensive one-shot. Almost all D&D adventures involve exploring an unfamiliar environment, even if the goal isn't to kill everything that lives there. While this does lead to consistently exciting gameplay, it's not the only option, especially for a one-shot. Defending a base from invaders can be just as dramatic and mechanically engaging as attacking the fortress of the enemy. If anything, it can even be more interesting because of the player's familiarity with the terrain, especially if you let them contribute to the map itself, which is definitely feasible for a one-shot session. As a one-shot, this session doesn't need to be taken very seriously, and it can be based on a silly concept, like porting the plot of the movie Home Alone into a fantasy world. But if you become familiar with how a defensive encounter works, then you could use it for a more serious Helm's Deep style encounter in a longer campaign. Next up is the monster one-shot. The classes and races in 5th edition are meticulously designed to come across as both balanced and fun to play in the long term. Sometimes this isn't achieved perfectly, but it's roughly true. But the specifics of balance don't matter as much in a one-shot, so why not let your party consist of a doppelganger, spectator, manticore, and basilisk? Just pick a challenge rating and let your players go wild, possibly banning things like gelatinous cubes, depending on just how ridiculous you want the one-shot to be. If the players feel too limited by just the entries in the monster manual, then why not let them add a few class levels on top of the monster stats? The actual adventure could either be a traditional dungeon crawl, or maybe a raid on a human village, or maybe a version of the defensive one-shot where the player characters live in some kind of dungeon that's being raided by pesky adventurers. I don't want to go into any more detail on this, because that would require a more general commentary on how to deal with evil characters, which definitely deserves its own video. My final idea is the Hidden Identities one-shot. This one technically involves player versus player conflict, but it takes less inspiration from MOBAs and Battle Royale games, and more from games like Werewolf and Among Us, even if it might still end with some sort of fight. The specifics should be up to you to decide, but this session will revolve around one or a few characters having some kind of secret identity, and some sort of goal that puts them at odds with the rest of the party. Given the structure of a typical D&D game, having this goal to simply kill the other PCs while their friends aren't looking might not be appropriate, since it's easy for players to tell who's rolling to sneak away and who's split off to go into a private discussion room. More likely, the trader's goals should revolve around social interaction. Maybe the party is exploring a labyrinth, and the trader knows the whole layout of the labyrinth, and wants to lead the PCs into some sort of sacrificial chamber to absorb their power, all while trying not to let on that they know too much. This is a type of game that requires more planning than normal game plus one simple twist. So if you're interested, I might make a whole video on it in the future. And that wraps it up. I know the holiday season can be a great time to play some one shots. So I hope that I piqued your interest enough to try out one of these sessions. If you're feeling especially daring, then I should mention that it's possible to have multiple of these concepts in a single game. For example, you could tell the players to pass their character sheets to the left, and then throw in a deck of many things into the adventure. 
That might be too chaotic for its own good, though. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on these one-shots in the comments, and feel free to share your own ideas as well. Thanks for watching, and see y'all next time.